I'm Jane Curtis. I'm from the Marin Literacy Program, which is jointly sponsored by the San Rafael Public Library and the Marin County Free Library. I work at two different locations. I work in a jail and in a prison. They're very different. Uh, in terms of the population that you serve, how long they're there. The dependability of the population in prison, they're already sentenced. So they're doing a specific amount of time. So you can build different kinds of relationships in a prison setting. At the jail, in and out. You never know who's going to be there. You never know how long they're going to be there. Uh, they might go and come back. So the two settings present different challenges. Um, the father's program, which is what I'm going to describe to you today, and the mother's program, serves parents, caregivers, um, uncles, aunts, grandparents of children. Um, those incarcerated adults is our, our, our population. So why are we serving these incarcerated parents? Well, here are some statistics. Like literacy, the um, recycling, the um, recidivism, and the intergenerational repetition of both incarceration and low literacy, they kind of go together. So it makes sense to us to bring family literacy into jails and prisons to break both of those cycles. Um, one of the things that we've learned over the years, and there was a three-state study done by the um, Correctional Education Association that showed that inmates who received any kind of educational programming were less likely to recidivate, to go back to jail or prison. And they also found that the more educational programming they received, the lower the rate dropped. So what makes sense is to provide that programming. So what is the father's program, the mother's program? It's a family literacy program that was modeled after Families for Literacy, which is a California state library initiative begun, whoa, 1990, I think. Um, so it has, uh, as its goals, we want to break that cycle, both of incarceration and low literacy. How do you do that? Well, one of the ways that you do that is that you educate your learners that they are role models and that their children are watching them. And this, for a lot of men, is really news. They think parenting, that's women do that. I'm kind of extra. But a lot of studies show that the role that fathers play with their children is incredibly important and very powerful. So one of the ways that you can be a positive role model for your kids is to be their first teacher. Well, how can you be a model and be a teacher if you yourself are not real comfortable with books? And when we show how powerful books are in the parenting and intergenerational impact that books have. Um, one of the things about this program, I, I always think of it as kind of a sneaky way of teaching critical thinking. Uh, you really engage the learners f because of the love that they have of, for their kids. They don't want their kids to come to jail. That's very clear. Not one of them will ever raise their hand. So, so using children's picture books and talking about talking about the messages and the engagement that those books bring to students and actually the instructors um, is a really great way to bring up some very challenging issues about discipline and punishment, about authority. The picture books really do a lot of the work for us. They, they pull everybody's attention in and 
the audience, be it at prison or at jail, is a rapt audience when they're read aloud to, just as you would imagine anybody would be. The thing that distinguishes the father's program and the mother's program is that books are tools. And we teach hands-on at every session. A children's picture book is used to uh, generate discussion, to practice reading aloud. Um, and that distinguishes us from the parenting programs that are offered at many uh, correctional facilities. So what are the elements that make up the father's program or the mother's program? Classroom instruction, which equals adult literacy instruction and on the outside. We don't teach literacy skills per se. We engage in reading. And we use children's picture books to do that. We have a lot of handouts. We have some writing activities. We encourage both moms and dads and women and men to write to the children in their lives. The children's picture books, in every session, every inmate gets their own copy. So they sit around, and they have an opportunity, each of them, to read a page or two. They can pass. After time, people who don't want to read in the beginning will take the risk, and, and their reading improves. Um, not only is it practice for reading aloud, but the content of the, the books can be very provocative. And many times, the messages are really relevant to decision making in adults and generates a lot of discussion amongst the um, inmate students. At the end of the course, each inmate can choose a gift book for each child in their life. And at the jail, we can audio tape them reading that book. Uh, at the prison, we cannot. So one of the inmates actually in our last course said this was the first. He's got like five kids. And they range from 15 to 4. This was the first book he's ever read to any of his children. And he was so nervous. He was stay, he said, I practiced all night. It has really transformed this guy. It's just been a pretty amazing story. So the act of picking a children's picture book for each child gives that person a chance to practice what they've learned. Is this a good book for this person? Is this appropriate? Is this something that would engage their interest? Is this right for their age level? Uh, in prison, we are able to have uh, story times. We have a wonderful volunteer who comes every month. We maintain a book collection. We can't do that at jail because there's no face-to-face um, -face visiting. It's all through plexiglass. So each place has its own challenges. And we have women in the jail when we do not have women in prison, in that prison. So this program is based on this guide, which is published by the California State Library Association. And if you're interested in looking at it, you can go to the California State Library Foundation website or call them. Uh, each of the lessons shows the books that are used. And there's a comprehensive list of books in the back to use with each lesson to, to support the topics that are talked about. So best practices and current challenges. Well, absolutely critical to train and support all your staff, particularly in correctional awareness. You're visiting a facility. They have their rules. You have to abide. Some of them are stupid. Some of them are arbitrary. But too bad, you're the visitor. Um, which means you do always comply. So it really isn't for everyone. Inmates need boundaries. That's why a lot of them are in jail or in prison. So whoever is delivering the material really needs to be clear on what they require. And the biggest piece is that 
to just list skills that inmates needs, uh, needs is not enough. You need to generate insight, which is, again is developing critical thinking. Challenges. Well, the high turnover, impossible to track really in an accurate way. It's kind of a nightmare. Uh, and hard to measure success when you have such high turnover. Overfamiliarity is the uh, sort of the key, you know, curse of the, um, the volunteer or the staff person working in corrections. They don't really want you to get too familiar with any incarcerated person because you could help them escape, they could steal your information. And that there's very limited time for tutoring or for offering your um, programming. When it's, there's a lockdown or it's time to move to uh, another activity is coming, that's it. So you might have an hour, hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes. So um, I, I just want to mention that the, the gentleman on the far right who's a lifer was just released from San Quentin in August and it's quite a miracle and it's just fabulous. And you just had dinner with him. So um, <laughs> hold your questions and at the end we'll have time to move on to do that. 